Hey guys, I'm Dan Meyer and welcome back to Dominate Fishing. In today's video, we're going to talk about five crappie lures that when fished side by side with other lures, will outfish them. And at the end of this video, I'm going to give you a pro tip on a secret on how to make your own crappie lure that will outfish other lures if you're out on a boat and you run out of lures or you don't have the right crappie lures with you I'm going to show you how to make a top crappie lure so you're definitely going to want to stick to the end and check that out so I first learned the importance of using the right crappie lure a long time ago when I was fishing with my dad a lot of people have heard this story by now but I was fishing with my dad and he was using you know a lure and he was absolutely hammering the crappies I was using a different lure and I couldn't get a bite and he, you know he told me he had more of those lures he told me I could use one and stubborn as I was I didn't switch lures I just kept using what I was using not getting a bite I finally switched over to the same lure that he was using and I started catching them and right there I kinda learned that some days it really makes a big difference what lure you're using. Now there's some days when it doesn't matter. Crappies, they're just hitting, they're gonna hit anything, but there, there are some days where they just they want a certain lure, a certain size, shape, and color, and you have to have that. And there are just lures that day in and day out outproduce other lures. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. And thankfully I learned that a long time ago because now I can be on the other end of that story and uh, you know using some of these lures to outfish other people so that's what we're gonna be talking about today what we're really talking about is just some of the best lures day in and day out so getting right into these lures here the first thing to keep in mind is that some of these lures are just just the best you know what I mean they're just that's very high percentage lures. Some of these lures are going to be th their situational lures where in certain situations they're going to outfish other lures and I'll kind of tell you when to use what lure. So getting right into the first lure this is quickly becoming my favorite lure. Um, I don't know if it's quite ready to unsuit to unseat my favorite lure. Anyone who's been following me for a long time knows what my favorite crappie lure is, at least my favorite plastic crappie lure. We're going to talk about that later. But right now we're going to talk about you know, one of my new favorite lures. This lure just hammers crappies and that is the Bobby Garland Slab Slayer. Looks like this. I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to show you how to hook it. But this lure I, I use all the time now and it just hammers crappies and it hammers crappies when they're not hitting other lures and it'll catch more crappies than other lures so this is what the lure looks like this is electric chicken one of my favorite colors it's because it's got the chartreuse and the pink so right here I have a 16th ounce jig and the way I'm gonna hook this is I'm gonna stick the the point of the hook right in the center of the bait just like this and then I'm going to bring it up through the, the back of the bait and then slide it up all the way onto the little bait collar snug with the jig. I like jigs with bait collars. You don't have to always use them. It just helps to hold the plastic up you know, for, for longer. And this is what it's going to look like, just like this fish that bait vertically just like this you got that tail that goes now one thing I really like about this slab slayer it comes in the two inch and the three inch I like them both I like the three inch for bigger crappies but this is a fairly big bait it's fat it's pretty well you know it's either two or three inches it's a big bait I think the bigger baits help to get the big crappies now you're gonna catch big crappies on small baits but a lot of times, especially in the summer, these big baits are going to get some big crappies. You're going to get some small ones too, but it helps to get those bigger crappies. Now you can fish this bait different ways. You can vertical jig it. You can get over the top of cribs, vertical jig those crappies. You can cast it out underneath a bobber. 
You can work it over the tops of weeds. You know, you can pitch this thing under docks. You can pitch it into heavy cover. You can fish it. You can bed fish with it. There's a lot of different ways you can use this bait. This bait, day in and day out, is a go-to bait. This is not really one of those situational baits. Lately, when I go into my box and I want, you know, the first lure that I've been pulling out has been the Slab Slayer. Okay, so, the second bait. This bait also really does well, and I talk about it quite a bit. That is the Berkeley Galt Minnow. But the reason I talk about it a lot is because that bait catches fish. And it'll catch fish all the time, but this is when I'm using the Galt. If the crappies are really aggressive and they're hitting anything, I don't use the gulp usually in that situation because I can catch them on something else. Gulp's fairly expensive and it's not as durable as some of these other lures. So when they're really aggressive, I'm going to go for a cheaper lure and just catch them on that. But when the bite is a little bit tough, when other lures aren't working, so we're talking cold fronts, colder water, or if the day is just tough and the crappies are not really snapping, you're going to catch more fish on the gulp. It, this, this is the two and a half inch minnow. I also have the one inch minnow. I'm going to talk about when to use each one. The two and, I like to use the two and a half inch minnow because I like to use bigger baits. You still catch small ones, but I feel like you catch more big ones when you're using the bigger baits. Now that I say that, I'm saying on average because you can use a small tube jig and catch plenty of big slabs. Or you can use this big bait and you know you're still going to catch the smaller ones. But when I can, I like to use a big bait. So with the, with the Berkeley Galt, we got two colors. Here's the Fire Tiger. Here's the uh, Shiner. The, the shape and the scent, you're going to get bites. It, it, they just work all the time. They work really well and a lot of times they're going to outfish other lures. When I'm going to go to the small one inch minnow, those come in these little jars is when if I'm fishing a real severe cold front the crappies are they're, they backed off they're hanging tight in the weeds I've had it plenty of times where other artificial lures are not getting hit even sometimes live bait isn't getting hit but when you downsize to this really small one inch Berkeley Galt minnow with a 32nd or a 64th ounce hook you can get the you can get those crappies to bite. I've seen it time and time again where just on not even the two and a half inch minnow, just these small minnows are get can catch fish and it can be just noticeable, especially in the spring when the crappies can be on or off. You know what I mean? That's when these can really excel. So Berkeley Gall Minnow, also another great minnow. So now the third minnow that I really like, it's another Bobby Garland minnow. Or sorry, another Bobby Garland lure. And it's this baby shad swimmer. It looks just like this. Let me show it to you. Another thing I like about see, you can see the tail. This action tail really moves well. You can fish this bait under a bobber. You can fish it, you can just swim it, just hook, hook a jig right through the back here so it's popping out the back, cast it out, slowly swim it back to the boat. You don't need to put much action for this tail to go because when you're fishing crappies, one thing that's important, you want the bait to just nice and easy move. You don't want the big erratic motions. Crappies don't like the big erratic motions most of the time. Mostly they want a nice fluid motion. They can get up, stare at it, but with they want a fluid motion with the you know the movement of the bait. But it's good if you can get the tail or something to be to really move. That's what triggers the strike. But you don't want the whole bait to be jumping. So with this sensitive tail, you can get that to move without fishing the bait really fast. So again, you can fish this bait vertically. You can vertical jig it over cribs. You can kind of noodle it in reeds or in wood. You can fish it under a bobber. Lots of different ways to fish this lure. You can actually drop shot this and uh, day in, day out, this is another one that catches a lot of crappies. So, incidentally, right now we're talking about the top lures. If you want to know kind of what I do to find the crappies, to use these lures on, just grab a copy of my 7-step crappie locating system. It's free. 
all it does is it highlights the steps that I take when I go to a new body of water to locate these crappies. Just the other day I was out, I tried seven spots, didn't catch a crappie. On the A spot, we caught a whole bunch of big slabs. So it's kind of just outlines the steps that I do to find these fish. Okay, so next to lure, the fourth lure. The fourth lure that will outfish your, you know, other lures is the marabou hair jig. Now th this, and I actually with it, I'm gonna throw in the feather jig. These are one of those situational lures where when they're on, they're really on. And I've seen a lot of times where myself or somebody else has been using these and outfished other lures, even live bait. So when these are working, they're really working. When you're going to use the marabou hair is in cold water and uh, in cold fronts. You've had warm weather, you get hit with the cold front, that really slows the crappies down. That's when throwing a marabou hair jig or just a, a regular hair jig is going to get the bites. Now this is a pretty big hair jig. When I'm going to use this, this type of marabou hair jig, it's on a 16th ounce jig. I'm going to use this in a cold water situation like the fall. So a couple falls ago, I was out fishing. There was three guys in the boat. And I, I had, we were using live bait. One guy, wasn't me had a marabou hair jig, the rest of us all just had jig and minnow. He really outfished us. Ever since then, mar I've fished marabou hair jigs more. I used to just fish them in the spring. The spring is another great time to use them because you get those, those cold fronts that really cool the, wa the surface temperature of the water down. Those fish, they move out a little deeper and they shut down. That's when, if you fish a marabou hair jig tipped with either a small minnow or some, uh, some larva, wax worms or spikes you're gonna get more bites same with these little hair jigs this is a 60 so this I'll go to when it's a cold front that's a 64 ounce jig it's got the hair and I'm gonna tip it with wax worm spikes or a minnow so hair jigs really excel in cold fronts <clears throat> alright so the last lure the fifth lure saved one of the best for last is this is my all-time favorite lure. The, the Slab Slayer, I really like fishing. That's moving up in the ranks. But my all-time favorite lure, my go-to, is the Tube Jig. I fish Tube Jigs all the time. It's one of my highest confidence lures because it nearly always works. You can fish it in a ton of different situations. You can fish it pretty much all year long. Not I don't fish, you don't fish it ice fishing. So I, I don't ice fish it, but all open water season, the Tube Jig will work. I like a variety of colors. Pink and white is one of my staples. It's my go-to. Black and chartreuse. I other or I also really like I like multicolored tubes because day in and day out crappies can be color sensitive. They're, they're pretty color sensitive fish. If you have a multicolored tube, for example, pink and white, black and chartreuse, you're hitting them with two different colors. If they're preferring one over the other, that's uh you know, you, you've got a double chance. Another little secret that I like to do is I like my jig head to be a different color than the tube. Just adds another color into that mix. But tube jigs, you can fish them under a float, which I do all the time. You can, you know, pitch them into wood, pitch them under a dock. You can noodle with them. Basically, that means you're just holding your rod and you're kind of dinking and dunking in wood, in bulrushes, around dock posts. They work great for that. You can drop shot tube jigs if you've got, sometimes you'll have a really steep drop off and uh, the weeds will form a wall. You can drop shot that tube right along that weed wall and pound the crappie. So the tube jig, one of my absolute, probably all time best crappie lures. So these are my top five crappie lures. They just hammer the big slabs. Alright guys, now it's time for the pro tip on what to do if you don't have one of these top crappie lures with you and uh, you're out doing some crappie fishing or you were fishing some, something else and all of a sudden you see some crappies and you want to start fishing them. This is a secret. Most lure companies, they don't want you to know this. Alright, so what you can do is take a bass tube like this, or a bass worm I should say. This is a standard bass worm. Take a pliers 
or a knife and cut the tube and get yourself just a thin little piece. Then just simply hook that piece of plastic right on your bait like any of these other baits. And looky there guys, fish that sucker horizontal and that'll, the, that bait will fish just as good as any other bait. And all you had to do is take a bass worm. I mean you could make your own crappie lures. Just take plastic like a, a bass worm, cut them into thin little strips and then there's different ways you can hook them. You can hook them and fish them horizontal like that and that you you know the thinner you cut that tail the better it's going to whip or you could fish them vertical and what you're going to do to fish them vertical like under a float is you're going to take a little piece hook it through like this take it to the back turn it around and then fish it like that then fish that vertical just get that tail whipping if you're going to fish it vertical you're going to want to fish it or you're going to want to cut it a little thinner but the best way is just fish that sucker horizontal just like you would I mean that looks like a whole bunch of the other pieces of uh, plastic that we talked about and I just cut that off a bass tube so so I hope this video helped you guys for more tips just like this make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you guys in the next video